He has made it a life principle always to do things better than they have been done before. So wrote a contemporary of Henry Leland some 40 years before Leland built the first Lincoln. 40 years before he would apply a passion for engineering exactitude to the design and manufacture of automobiles. Leland's stubborn commitment to absolute precision was the tool that would help him teach a fledgling auto industry exactly what a luxury car should be. And it was the prize that led Henry Ford to purchase Leland's newly formed Lincoln Motor Company in 1922. Henry's son, Edsel Ford, was soon named president of the Lincoln Motor Company. Early on, he summoned some of the world's great coach builders, including Brune, Fleetwood, Judkins, Murphy, and LeBaron, to Detroit. Hoping to motivate them in their styling efforts for Lincoln, he remarked, while my father made the most popular car in the world, I want to build the best car in the world. Those very words have motivated generations of Lincoln designers and engineers ever since. Under Ford leadership, Lincoln grew in scope and stature. That early dedication to the art of building fine automobiles was preserved and nourished. Every Lincoln, for example, was shipped in its own individual paper bag and sealed in a dust-free railroad car. Edsel Ford was a man of exquisite taste and artistic inclination, qualities that he brought to the manufacture and styling of automobiles. To him, the automobile was an art form, and Lincoln after Lincoln reflected that philosophy. Edsel couldn't pass up a beautiful automobile design and often ordered limited runs of a custom body style that he felt was particularly well done. His influence ensured that Lincolns were recognizable and distinctive. Distinctive in the powerful imagery of their tall nickel-plated radiator shells, in their striking greyhound hood ornaments. Early cars, for example, featured numerous refinements, including glass partitions and special golf club compartments. In the 1930s, an era that marked the extinction of many luxury marks, Lincoln continued to build on its unique heritage. Its flagship was the magnificent K-Series. Born in 1931, the K-Series of Lincoln automobiles featured some of the most spectacular cars the world had ever seen, and some of the most advanced engineering the world had ever seen, including the V12 engine, aluminum cylinder heads, power brakes, and much more. In celebration of the K-Series' first birthday, the KB was chosen as pace car for the 1932 Indy 500. The K would soon prove as durable as it was beautiful and innovative. In fact, some K-Series V12 engines were driven for over 300,000 miles without replacement of the bearings or turning of the crankshaft. Design was a Lincoln hallmark, so in 1933, Edsel Ford established a new styling department. Two years later, the Zephyr was ready for introduction. It was revolutionary, a true design breakthrough. It was the first successful production fastback, and its aerodynamic styling featured streamlined fenders and no running boards. Its steel truss design was the forerunner of unitized construction. In addition, the Zephyr introduced the one-piece windshield and featured a powerful, lightweight V12 engine. Among Zephyr driving families was that of Edsel Ford, shown here in some Ford family home movies. Unlike the Chrysler Airflow, which failed in the marketplace, the Zephyr was a commercial success and an artistic success. It was honored in 1951 by the Museum of Modern Art as the first successfully designed streamlined car in America. A custom body version of Zephyr called Town Car featured a large, elegantly appointed passenger cabin and formal roof line. This car may well have been designed to please Mrs. Edsel Ford and to accommodate the stylishly large bonnets of the period. But the most celebrated product of Edsel's aesthetic genius was the Lincoln Continental. Upon returning from Europe in 1938, he asked his styling department to create a car that would reflect the elegance and style of Europe in an American way. Edsel personally oversaw the development. The first prototype was delivered to Edsel in Hobe Sound, Florida in 1939 and was so well received that Edsel returned with 200 blank check orders. The car was immediately put into production. 
Continental was a masterwork of automotive styling, a symphony of gracefully arcing curves. Each Continental was essentially handmade. The 1941 model featured a safety innovation, turn indicators. Edsel Ford's death in 1943 marked the end of an automotive age. His genius and refined taste had inspired some of the most beautiful, most innovative automobiles that the world had ever known. In 1945, Henry Ford II, Edsel's oldest son, became president of Ford Motor Company. Henry vowed that his father's favorite automobile would continue to distinguish itself as the company's flagship brand. In 1949, Benson Ford became general manager of the Lincoln Mercury Division. He soon helped revive one important element of the Lincoln luxury image, performance. An all-new V8 engine introduced in 1952 enabled Lincoln to dominate the 2,000-mile Pan Am race in 52, 53, and 54. 1955 saw the introduction of yet another Lincoln destined for classic designation, the Mark II, another startlingly artful design. Like Continental, the Mark II was produced in limited quantity. However, its influence and impact were major. Its styling was elegant and unique, avoiding, as the original Continental did, the design excesses of temporary fashion. The Mark II set standards for manufacturing exactitude as well. Each engine was tested, disassembled, inspected, and retested. Transmissions were road tested, and each car was shipped in a fleece-lined canvas with a plastic cover. The 1956 Lincoln Premier, a more popularly priced luxury automobile, won the Industrial Design Institute's Award of Excellence. Safety received major emphasis in 1956, as Lincolns were offered with energy-absorbing steering columns and recessed center steering wheels. Seat belt use was encouraged. In 1957, a new assembly plant opened at Wixom, Michigan. Since its first day online, that plant has built only Lincolns. Thus, it has been able to devote vast resources to the upholding of Lincoln Motor Company's original mandate of absolute precision, year after year, every year since. In 1961, a new Continental again distinguished Lincoln from the rest of the automotive world. Tasteful and understated, the 1961 Continental soon distanced itself from the garish and gaudy luxury cars of its day. Chief Engineer Harold MacDonald helped refocus Lincoln's dedication to manufacturing precision and quality control. Bodies, for example, were immersed in rust-proofing primer paint and all cars were driven a 12-mile road test before delivery to dealers. The Continental was a major sales success and continued virtually unchanged until 1970. In 1968, Mark III exploded on the luxury car scene. Combining subtle classical reference with crisply fresh design, it projected a powerful image of solid prestige and great worth. Within months, its bold square grille and continental hump came to signify the best that Detroit or the world had to offer. The decade of the 70s saw Lincoln build on the formal styling precedent that the Mark III had established. The rounder, sleeker Mark IV replaced the Mark III and immediately outsold its luxury coupe competition. Lincoln began the very successful designer series in 1976. And in 1979, the collector edition, the last of a Lincoln generation, sold out in a matter of months. The 1980s brought about major changes not only at Lincoln, but in the automobile business as a whole. In response to the need for increased fuel economy, Lincoln introduced in 1980 the first completely new Continental in a decade. This trimmer version featured an efficient 5-liter V8 and the industry's first four-speed automatic overdrive transmission. Other Lincoln innovations of the early 1980s include the industry's first electronic instrument panel message center in 1980 and nitrogen pressurized shock absorbers and industry first in 1982. Big, bold, and brawny, the 1984 Mark VII muscled its way to the head of the personal luxury car market. And once again, underscored the styling and engineering leadership of Lincoln. Lincoln had a stirring new design that was unlike anything the competition was offering. 
A mighty and sure-footed road machine, the Mark 7 offered innovative features such as an electronically controlled air suspension system, an industry first. Yet the most notable styling achievement of the 1980s belongs once again to the Continental nameplate. Taking design cues from the original Continental, the newest version captured much of that classic smoothness of line and beauty of form. Some would call it the most beautiful Lincoln ever built, and quite possibly the most beautiful automobile ever built. Like its predecessor, this Continental, which was introduced in 1988, and has been refined over the last several years, is an American interpretation of functional European style. An automobile of great technical sophistication, the new Continental offers a network of computers that control almost all driving systems, from steering to suspension to fuel injection, ignition, and anti-lock braking. The on-the-road result is masterful. The contemporary transformation of the Lincoln model line was completed with the launch of the 1990 town car, a car whose aesthetic and functional roots can be traced at least to the town car of 1940. In this latest town car, Lincoln designers and engineers were able to incorporate the aerodynamic purity and sleek styling of recent Lincoln products without sacrificing town car's singular position as a car of expansive dimensions and unparalleled comfort. The automobile was recognized as Motor Trend Magazine's 1990 Car of the Year, the first luxury sedan in 38 years to win that award. With the introduction of the 1991 models, Lincoln further enhanced town cars on the road skill by fitting it with the first American-built overhead cam V8, a power plant of arguably unmatched smoothness and brilliantly crisp response. This 4.6 liter gem of an engine provides massive reserves of passing and accelerative power. At the same time, Lincoln continued to demonstrate its deep concern for occupant safety as ABS was made standard in all car lines and both driver and passenger airbags were offered. Today, Lincoln stands at the pinnacle of the automotive world and Lincoln automobiles are more desired than ever before. Exactly what Edsel Ford had in mind when he charted Lincoln's course so many years ago. I want to build the best car in the world.